Well, Christmas time has come and gone yet again, but that doesn't mean the time for making lists and checking them twice is over. We're fast approaching baseball season, and with that always comes a new MLB The Show game. With MLB The Show 23 just over the horizon, I wanted to close the book once and for all on MLB The Show 22. We've looked over the game, both good and bad, and now I want to see how SDS can improve upon it going into MLB The Show 23. Now, I will be very clear up front, I do not expect all the items on this wish list to be included in MLB The Show 23. Honestly, I don't expect even half of them to be included. These items are not based on any information or guesses on what will actually be in MLB The Show 23. This video is solely my own ideas for how the team can improve upon MLB The Show 22 and make MLB The Show 23 a great game. With all that said, let's get into my wish list. Sports Gamers Online is the number one source for the sports gamer. Like I said in my video on what I did not enjoy about MLB The Show 22, my biggest problem this past year that I feel needs to be addressed is the hitting. While I would absolutely love a brand new hitting engine this year, I realize that's a big ask. That's why I'll be perfectly fine with at the very least some gameplay changes and improvements. Hitting needs to be much more consistent. It should not feel random and unrewarding. Player skill should be the most important factor in determining if a ball put in play is a hit or not. The other big gameplay change I want is for fielders to have an acceleration rating added that determines how long it takes for them to reach their top speed. I don't want to continue to see Babe Ruth running around the outfield like he's Ricky Henderson. This will also open up the outfield for more hits, which will help with the hitting problem that I talked about. Now let's get into Diamond Dynasty. The top of my list for Diamond Dynasty is bring back a devoted Team Affinity program. The merging of Team Affinity with the innings programs to create featured programs was a failed attempt to make players' lineups more diverse and less meta-dependent. It also was a way of reducing the rewards players got from gameplay, forcing them to grind even more to complete collections. Bring back Team Affinity where players can get all 30 players from gameplay. The featured program can continue to be different in terms of the number of bosses players earn, themes, and how long they last and such. Next on the list is to shorten the grind for the Player of the Month cards in the monthly awards programs. These programs became so tiresome to grind once the best cards in them were added that it made grinding for them a chore instead of a fun progression. While we are on the topic of these programs, if you're going to continue to reveal the Retro Lightning card at the beginning of the month, let us earn that card immediately instead of having to wait four weeks to get it. I'll talk about this more in my Road to the Show section, but created players need to be taken out of Diamond Dynasty. The fact that the development team thought it would be a good idea to let players have cheesy maxed out ratings players on their team in the main online competitive modes in the game is astounding to me. It's gone on for two years now, and it's time for this experiment to finally be put to bed. My favorite mode in Diamond Dynasty is Conquest mode, so of course I'm going to ask for some additions to it. The main thing I'd love for this mode is to add an AI difficulty setting. Currently in the mode, the AI will not try to take territory like a real player would. They just fill out a little section of the map and then just sit there, waiting for the human player to come and conquer them. This leads to completing a conquest map being just boring instead of requiring some actual strategy. Adding an AI difficulty setting would also let players try to earn better rewards and would also add a lot of replayability to the mode. Co-op needs a lot of love and care this year. The mode is introduced with a ton of bugs and issues. There are also no rewards or missions to complete in the mode, making playing it just a novelty. If SDS wants people to engage with this mode, they need to spend a lot more time making sure it's stable and functioning how it should. They also need to add some sort of meaningful rewards to it. I think the reward path should be similar to events where so many wins earns you certain rewards. Now let's move on to franchise, which will probably be the biggest section of this entire video. Franchise mode in MLB The Show has been neglected for at least a decade at this point, with fans of the mode seeing little to no upgrades most years. So it's finally time to revamp franchise mode into what it should be. The most important and impactful addition that could be made this year is bringing back online franchises. Online franchises were removed from the game starting in MLB The Show 18. At the time, SDS said it was done, quote, to prioritize the stability and speed of our online infrastructure. Anyone who's played MLB The Show over the last few years knows the online experience is anything but stable. With freeze-offs, glitches, and exploits galore, it's time to stop using this as an excuse to not have an online franchise. 
The team also said, with the major technology change that came with MLB The Show 18, it wasn't possible to just leave the previous mode without alteration. The team has now had four years, as well as a new generation of extremely powerful consoles, to make the needed alterations to get online franchises working. MLB The Show is the only one of the major sports titles that does not have this in their game, which is a common theme for many of the things on my wish list. Another feature that is common in all other sports games but absent from MLB The Show is custom draft classes. Madden and NBA 2K have allowed players to create draft classes and share them online for years now. MLB The Show desperately needs to get with the times and implement this basic feature. While they're at it, they should take a page out of NBA 2K's book and use their impressive lineup of legends to create historic draft classes. Imagine being able to replay the entire careers of guys like Babe Ruth, Kirk Gibson, King Griffey Jr., and David Ortiz. A full expansion mode would also be very easy to implement in MLB The Show. The team creation suite is already available in franchise mode for rebranding teams. All you'd need to do is add the expansion draft, which is pretty similar to the fantasy draft that's already in MLB The Show as well. Not only has NBA 2K had this feature for years, but the All-Star Baseball series back on the Xbox and PS2 had this feature almost 20 years ago. International free agency needs to be added into the offseason for franchise mode. Some of the biggest stars in MLB right now, including MLB The Show 22 cover athlete Shohei Otani, were signed from overseas leagues. There should be a specific period in the offseason where players can offer contracts exclusively to international free agents. Players wouldn't know their exact ratings, and they would have to scout them like they do with MLB draft prospects. Speaking of scouting, can we please change up scouting this year? I mean, the scouting in this series has basically been the same since before it was even called MLB The Show. There were so many options for SDS to go in that have proven successful in other games. It could go with a deep system like Madden has recently implemented, or a very simple system like NBA 2K and the old NCAA football games. Either way, just mix it up for once, I'm begging you! Player training is another part of franchise mode that feels like it hasn't been touched since the PS2 days. The current method for training is just going into a list of your players and assigning them one drill that will supposedly improve certain attributes. However, there's no way of really seeing how these are affecting players. A new training system is needed that shows players how their decisions are paying off in player progression. Player progression and regression also needs an overhaul. This is something that's been advertised as being improved over the last few years, but the issue remains year after year. Player performance seems to have little to no effect on how much a player progresses or regresses. There have been plenty of times I've seen a player have one of the best years of their career, and their overall still drop several points due to their age or years of MLB service time. Prospect and farm system rankings should be expanded and easier to view. Currently, you can only view the top 50 prospects in the entire league. However, during gameplay, we see on the new bottom line ticker, headlines about certain teams having the top ranked farm systems, and also seeing players with their organizational and league overall rankings. So we should have a screen somewhere where we can actually see the farm system rankings. We should also be able to view prospect rankings within our own farm system to see how our prospects stack up against one another. Alright, I've rambled on enough about franchise mode, let's move on to Road to the Show. It's another mode that I feel like has been neglected for several years now. What used to be the mode that sold the game, Road to the Show now just feels like something that's in the game to check off the career mode box on a sports game checklist. The number one thing that absolutely needs to happen this year in Road to the Show is get rid of this equipment and perk system. I have hated this system ever since it was introduced last year. It takes all replayability out of the mode. Now it doesn't matter how good your player performs. The only thing that matters in terms of their progression is getting the better perks and equipment, which can conveniently be purchased in the Diamond Dynasty marketplace. Once you have those perks and equipment, there's no need to grind to make your player better. Even if you create a brand new player, you'll still have all the perks and equipments available immediately that you've already unlocked. This means your new player could start out in the minors with a super high rating, and it's not worth playing. The only reason this system was put in was to try and integrate created players from Road to the Show into Diamond Dynasty. And like I said earlier, I don't know why SDS thought letting players use their maxed out players from Road to the Show in a competitive online mode like Diamond Dynasty was a good idea. Road to the Show and Diamond Dynasty 
need to remain completely separate modes. A real progression system needs to be put in place in Road to the Show. A player's rating should increase based on how the player performs in the games, as well as how they spend points that they earn to progress their player. You know, how Road to the Show was before this new system was put in. These upgrade points should not be sold in the marketplace and need to be earned at a rate where players feel like they're progressing in a reasonable amount of time. The story part of Road to the Show either needs to be completely remade from the ground up or just taken out completely. I understand they want to have the story part like NBA 2K does with their My Career mode, but the story in Road to the Show is so basic and so boring. It's literally the same text boxes with the same dialogue and conversation we've seen for years now. These conversations are here just to disguise you making decisions about your player's career. I would much prefer an actual menu that I can go into anytime I want to do these things, like requesting a trade or changing positions, instead of having to wait and hope that these conversations will pop up. The final item on my list is one that the community has been asking for for a while now. Throughout the 7th and 8th generation of consoles, MLB The Show featured year-to-year -year saves. This gave players the ability to transfer save files from one game to the next, meaning you could take your existing Road to the Show or franchise saves and continue them once the new game releases. This was one of the few features that MLB The Show created that no other major sports game did. This consumer-friendly feature helped set MLB The Show apart from the other annual sports games. However, starting with MLB The Show 21, year-to-year -year saves were removed. This meant players could no longer carry over the Road to the Show and franchise files they had been playing for years at this point. This also meant all the custom rosters, logos, and other community-created content in the vaults would now have to be remade every single year. And with the incredible amount of time and effort people put into these creations, it's not right to ask them to start all over every year. Bringing back year-to-year -year saves would be a big step for SDS to show people they still care about their players. So, as I look back on MLB The Show 22 and look ahead to MLB The Show 23, I realize just how unimpressive this series has been the last few years. This has left many fans like myself with a laundry list of wanted features and improvements. MLB The Show is at a crossroads. The game has begun to grow stale over the last few years. MLB The Show 23 is an opportunity to shed such staleness and become the premier sports game of the new console generation. To do this, they'll need to innovate and update almost every piece of this game, not just the Diamond Dynasty live content. If they can't do that, I fear the game will lose its good reputation with fans and go further away from the standard it set many years ago. So, there it is, my three-part MLB The Show 22 retrospective looks at the good, the bad, and the wish list for the future. So now it's time to let me know down in the comments what you think. What did you like or not like about MLB The Show 22? And more importantly, what do you hope to see in MLB The Show 23? What is it gonna take to make you, the consumer, give SDS your money another year? Let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure to follow Sports Gamers Online on Twitter, and to join in the conversation even more, join our Discord page. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave it a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our videos. And for all MLB The Show news and updates, stay tuned to Sports Gamers Online. I'm Brandon Satterwhite with SGO. Thank you for watching.